My full name's James Orville Burke. JB is probably the one that most everybody would be familiar with. February 21, 1949. We moved to Calgary in 1953 and I did all my schooling here in Calgary. Well, I probably where I started, you know, was the one that's the nearest and dearest to me, which is North Glenora in Edmonton. My grandfather, who I never met, who was Jim Burke also, and played long stick or defense for the Ottawa field lacrosse team. And I have an article from 1911, actually, oh, really? a, a write-up of a game in 1911 that was, you know, was in the Ottawa paper where he's mentioned fairly predominantly. And I understand a fairly good lacrosse player. That was my only connection really with the sport in our family. Well, I held a lot of positions uh, over the course of the career, uh, obviously involved in coaching, and I've probably coached at every level in Alberta from senior to uh, tyke novice over the years. Uh, organizationally, president of the Alberta Lacrosse Association, uh, active in the local uh, associations, be it Calgary or Edmonton, uh, president of the Canadian Lacrosse Association for four years, on the board of the Canadian Lacrosse Association for probably 20 years, all told, and uh, have been chairman now of the Canadian Lacrosse Foundation since 2007, so for 12 years there. Well, I think, I think if we go back to the very start, I started playing in uh, North Glenora Blues uh, in 1968. Uh, I'd never played before. The program had only started in Alberta in 1966, and it started because of the first Canada Games that lacrosse was going to be invited to play in, and each province had to have a team to play in there. So, uh, you know, a midget hockey team in North Glenora, community, a guy came in by the name of John Taylor, very beloved in the North Glenora lacrosse area, and said, boys, we're putting a lacrosse team together this summer, you're all playing on it, and we're going to go to the Canada Games in three years. And it started that way from scratch, and uh, it was a great, fantastic experience for me. Although I didn't live in North Glenora when I joined the team, I'm sure many other lacrosse communities are like this, but you would walk down a street, there'd be three boys in this house and four next door and one next door, and they're all lacrosse players. Everybody in the community played lacrosse. They had a, an outdoor rink there that no pavement, no lights, no anything, but was full all the time with kids playing lacrosse. And it was a spectacular experience for us to meet people and greet people and play lacrosse, learn a sport that we'd never ever played before. So we, we got our team got to the 69 Canada Games, which was great. We had a very dominant lacrosse program in the province at that time. In subsequent years, 73 and 77, we also sent teams out of North Glenora to the Canada Games, which was a pretty good accomplishment. And so we're 50 years later this year from the time of the first Canada Games. Our group still gets together in Edmonton once a year for a bit of a celebration. We'll get 40 people out from basically the 69, the 73, or the 77 teams. From the lacrosse point of view, there was, there's been some great, uh, you know, I won the Jim McFall Award in Alberta, which is for the volunteer, you know, recognized in Alberta for a year. I won the uh, Lester B. Pearson at the CLA for volunteerism uh, there. Uh, you know, I've got the Queen Elizabeth Medal for lacrosse, which was given out in Alberta here to a number of people, uh, uh, in Canada rather, to a number of people. Uh, you know, I've won city awards and those sorts of things all about lacrosse. From work, your work is just, just the satisfaction you get from doing a good job, from developing people and growing your business. And, we had, we, we had many good times there too. The Jim McFall Award is, uh, is right here behind me. It's a replica of a, of a native player. Uh, Jim McFall was a member of our 1969 Canada Games team and a really good player uh, as a junior player who went on to become a really good referee. Uh, didn't play too much senior lacrosse but primarily entered the refereeing field 
And uh, in 1978, Edmonton held the Commonwealth Games, and they had lacrosse in the Commonwealth Games. And Jim was a co-chair of the committee that was putting lacrosse together in the Commonwealth Games. And before the game started in 78, I think, Jim went on a vacation and picked up some sort of a mysterious bug somewhere and passed away at a very young age. And the company he worked for at the time was Dominion Construction, and they, they commissioned an artist to create a bronze trophy, uh, which was to be given out annually to the volunteer in Alberta who, who had contributed the most to the growth of lacrosse and uh, sportsmanship and development of, in, of youth and things. And um, it has been given out continuously since that date, since it was presented to the uh, uh, Alberta Lacrosse Association. And it sits in a, in a, resi in a city uh, location in Edmonton uh, on display there. And each of the recipients get a uh, replica. And this is a replica of the uh, trophy. The actual trophy is probably twice that size, three times that size, and solid bronze. But uh, it, it, it's an attractive piece of art, definitely. Well, if you ask some of the old timers, they said, well, we played when there were no rules which is not really the case, but I'm sure the rule book was probably quite a bit smaller then than it is now. The first year that I played was the first year they brought uh, mouth facial protection in. So we used to wear these mouth guards that covered our, our face. That was it. Nothing to cover here. Put a hockey helmet on in this mouth guard. So over the years, that of course has changed quite a bit. The protection has, has changed. The pads were the old hockey gloves that came up to here and basically goalie shoulder pads that you'd put on with the big arm things and you'd put, you know, protection on the side. You'd start your, your game weighing 180 pounds and you'd end weighing about 195 pounds because you'd have about 15 pounds of sweat <laughs> soaked up in these old pads. I'm going to say around the mid-80s, the CLA brought out men's field national championships. So the first one, I believe, was in Victoria. Victoria had a great team then. Yeah. Had a lot of guys on the national team that were living in Victoria. And so we went out there, uh, Manitoba, BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and uh, Ontario came to, to BC to play. And that was our first real Canadian championship that we played in. And we quickly realized that we, we were not going to get any better playing one game a year. So between Al Lusick in Saskatchewan and uh, Kevin Hall in Regina, Al was in Saskatoon, and the guys from, from uh, Winnipeg, Joey Harris and his group down there, we decided we put a little Prairie Field Across League together on a very low key basis. Basically, every city, Edmonton, Calgary, Saskatoon, Regina and Winnipeg would host a tournament in the summer. The commitment was that all the teams would come into the Saskatchewan tournaments because they're in the middle. It was optional whether you were going to go to Winnipeg or Winnipeg was going to come back because that's about a 14 hour drive. And no one could afford to fly back then. And Alberta and, and BC were ahead of Saskatchewan at that time. Saskatchewan came along very quickly and uh, developed their game in the, in the field first of all. I'm sure Al will mentioned that in his, uh, his broadcast. But uh, they, they really developed their game to a field game and they, they eventually they passed us in terms of, of our ability to play the game. It made the games much more difficult for us. So We have to understand, I think, that, it, that it's a very minor sport right now. It's a niche sport. There's 80,000 probably players in Canada right now. I don't know the exact number. You know, this game, if it wants to be considered a, a, a higher profile, has got to grow. And that takes work in every province across Canada. There's lots of work being done, but there's lots to do. The Pro League has definitely helped, particularly in the cities that it's active in. But, you know, being able to have that on a national sort of TV contract or something would really help too. There's just a lot of work to be done for the growth of the game. I mean, I think the, great, the, the game is very solid in its current state. I, do, I don't see it dying, but it has real challenges to grow, and that's what I think we have to really work on. 
2008 into the Canadian Lacrosse Hall of Fame as a builder, and uh, that was a, that was a thrill too. And I've managed to get back to quite a few dinners since then. And uh, you know, I don't know the exact numbers, but you know, there's 500 people sort of in the Hall of Fame. That's all. So when you think of how many people have played the game over all the years. To be one of 500 is pretty special, and I, I'm pretty proud of that. Our foundation can do four things really right now with our money. Is we can use it to expand the knowledge of the public on the game of lacrosse in Canada. We can use it to uh, is, you know, present educational courses for coaches and officials in the game of lacrosse. We can use it to uh, assist in programs for minorities, at-risk youth, indigenous youth, etc. And we can use it, uh, we can give it to any other uh, approved charitable foundation in Canada as a donation there if, if we so like. Our, the primary benefactor for us has been the Canadian Lacrosse Hall of Fame. You know, we've given them some money to assist them in making the move from their old facility to their new facility and covering some of their operating costs. We've given money, uh, we've done a number of uh, projects that we contract to the CLA, charitable activities that fall within those objectives that we have, uh, you know, providing money to the, through the CLA to the Indigenous Development Committee, um, any number of sort of projects that we've done over the years, uh, uh, lacrosse fits programs, things like that, that we've been able to fund through the foundation that that hasn't required or wouldn't be available maybe through the general lacrosse community or through the Canadian Lacrosse Association.